This is AutoLine Daily reporting on all aspects of the global automotive industry. Lines are being drawn in the sand over the Trump administration's fuel economy fight with California. General Motors, FCA and Toyota, along with the Association of Global Automakers, have sided with the administration. The automakers are seeking to intervene in a lawsuit between California and the government to argue in favor of the administration's position of there only being one fuel economy standard for the entire nation. This is in contrast to Ford, BMW, Honda and Volkswagen, who signed a deal with California to boost the fuel economy average of their fleets to 50 MPG by 2026. The Justice Department has launched an antitrust investigation into the agreement. The Trump administration is also seeking to revoke California's ability to set its own standards. And as we've said all along, this will likely end up being a lengthy court battle. And California has a mandate for automakers to sell electric cars, but it also offers incentives for people to buy new and used electrics, and it's building a charging infrastructure. So no wonder California leads the world in the adoption of EVs. And so far, 10 states have adopted California's mandate. But not all of them offer these kinds of incentives. If these states are mandating that automakers sell electric vehicles, shouldn't they at least buy them for their state-owned fleets? Most states own thousands of vehicles, but they buy very few electrics. It's very easy for those states to make mandates like this, but they ought to put their money where their mouth is. Otherwise, this just comes across as a bunch of political grandstanding. And Volkswagen has bold plans to boost its EV production. Reuters reports the company is retooling eight plants around the world by 2022 to produce around one million electric cars. That includes two plants in China that will have a production capacity of 600,000 vehicles. And by 2028, the VW Group will be able to produce 22 million electrics. By increasing its scale, VW hopes to push the price of its EVs down to around 20,000 euros, or a little over $22,000. And how will it help fund that shift? VW plans to increase sales of SUVs with combustion engines to 40% of overall sales by next year, which would be up from 23% in 2018. Mini's first fully electric vehicle, the Cooper SE, is going on sale in March of next year in the U.S. and is said to be available across the country, which leads us to believe it will not be sold in just California and the 10 states that have adopted its zero-emission mandate. Price for the EV starts at $30,750, including destination charges, but not including any incentives. The Cooper SE has a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery pack that Mini claims has 235 to 270 kilometers of WLTP range, which would be about 130 to 150 EPA miles. Dana is a global automotive supplier. Since 1904, we have been finding a better way by providing technologies that propel our vehicles into the future. And today, we are developing the technologies that are driving tomorrow's electrified vehicles. Dana, people finding a better way. Here's a new technology that might interest motorcycle riders. Continental has developed a connected services solution that allows users to keep their cell phone tucked away someplace safe. Once the Continental app is downloaded, users can integrate other services like turn-by-turn -turn navigation and music players right into the app. That information will then be displayed in the instrument cluster. And since the system is connected to Continental's cloud, information like possible road hazards or incoming weather could also be displayed. Borg Warner is using its know-how in internal combustion engines and drive lines to improve electric vehicles. Traditional torque vectoring systems for electric vehicles require two electric motors on the rear axle. But Borg Warner has developed a torque vectoring dual clutch unit that eliminates the need for one of those motors. Each of the two clutches can handle up to 2,600 newton meters of force, can independently distribute torque to the left and right rear wheels, and even has a disconnect feature when all wheel drive is not needed. 
Borg says production will kick off in the first half of 2022 for a major OEM's electric vehicle. Last week, Hyundai teased a fuel cell truck concept, and now it has made its official debut at the North American Commercial Vehicle Show in Atlanta. Called the HDC6 Neptune, it's a Class 8 semi-truck whose styling was inspired by streamliner railway trains from the 1930s. While the truck is meant to show off its fuel cell technology, it's also to signal the company's interest in jumping into the commercial vehicle market in the U.S. Hyundai sells commercial vehicles in 130 countries, but this is the first time it's shown one for the U.S. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dana, people finding a better way. Have you ever shopped for a used car online and were afraid you might get ripped off? Well, here's a service that could alleviate your concerns. R8TR, or Raider, is the name of a startup that developed an app that allows automotive experts to evaluate used cars and send a report to any potential buyer. The service costs about $80, though they charge more for low volume and exotic cars. The Raider follows prompts on the app to look for oil leaks, rust and dents, and any other problems. That way, if you buy a car online, at least you know what you're getting into and maybe use that info to negotiate a better price. Raider already has 500 specialists to inspect cars, but it's looking for more. So if you really know cars and are interested in making some side money, look them up at r8tr.com. Waymo took a big step with its autonomous ride hailing service. Reuters reports it's now offering rides without a safety driver on board for a limited number of users in Phoenix, Arizona. CEO John Kraftcheck did not say when or if it will expand the rider-only service, but Waymo is also testing its self-driving technology in Peterbilt trucks as a way to expand its business. You know that striped area next to handicapped parking spaces? Well, it's there for a reason. It allows enough room for the ramp of a wheelchair accessible vehicle to deploy and then for the person to get in and out. But what we didn't know is too often people park in that access aisle. So in an effort to boost awareness, wheelchair accessible vehicle maker Braunability has developed a 3D illusion painted into parking spaces that might make someone think they're going to damage their vehicle if they try to park there. With October as the National Disability Employment Awareness Month, FCA has rolled out similar spots at its North American headquarters in Auburn Hills, Michigan. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching.